Hi, in this video we will be talking about solvers in Lobby Rope version 5. Here I have the squiggly rope we created in our previous video. And if I click play, you will see that I have added a second attachment at the end of the rope, which is this one here. We can see the target is the rope transform and that the particle warp is the end control point. So, uh, what happens if I scale the rope as it is now? You will see that scaling behaves not like we would expect. This is because scaling a rope basically uh, scales the attachment points only and the mess. If we want to scale the rope uh, as a rigid object, uh, we would have to scale the solver instead. When I talk about scale, I also this also applies to rotation and translation. If I translate the rope, you would see that the, the rope physics uh, kick in and then the rest of the rope just follows the two attachment points, which are the ones actually being translated by the transform. Same happens with rotation. <coughs> but if I select the solver instead and I rotate it, you would see that this behaves just like a regular Unity uh, cube or a sphere world. It doesn't react to physics, I can just move it around, I can scale it. So this is because simulation takes place in the solver's local space. Uh, right now gravity is minus 9.8 in the y-axis. This is the solver's local y-axis. So if I rotate the solver upwards, gravity will still point in the same direction in the solver's local space. So keep this in mind because it can be useful to do some special effects. You can transform the solver and then have the gravity follow it at all times. Now let's see what happens if I create a second solver in the steam. I go to game object, 3D object, OB, OB solver. Now if I repattern the rope to the new solver at runtime, you would see that it automatically picks up the new solver simulation space and the direction of the gravity, we see it, which is in the local new solver's local y-axis. So I can reparent rope back and forth between any number of solvers in the scene. I can create a third solver, maybe place the solver, maybe place the solver there, rotate it like that, and then I can move the rope to the new solver as many times as I want. Uh, if you move a rope outside any solver, then you will see that it stops being simulated. Now, uh, you can have any number of ropes within a solver. So if I duplicate this multiple times, I can drag them under a new solver. So the things that you need to remember here are that the simulation takes place in the solver's local space and that you can have as many actors managed by a solver as you want and you can have as many solvers in the scene as you need. This is all for this video. See you in the next one.